Welcome to the Business Finance Bulletin, episode 117. this week's Business Finance Bulletin with me, Rob Warlow from Business Loan Services. In this week's bulletin, news from UK's latest online bank, also Lloyds Bank and their SME charter, business confidence and what is over trading in my Business Finance Tip of the Week. Let's start this week's bulletin by taking a look at the new way of doing banking, the new world. And I'm referring to online banking. Now, you may think, well, that's not exactly cutting edge or new world. Well, I'm not referring to online banking as you would know it as offered by the traditional high street banks. Here I'm talking about banks that are operating purely online. No physical premises, no high street branches anywhere. And a bank that is at the leading edge um, of this new way of doing banking is Atom Bank. Now, Atom Bank say so you can only do banking through apps um, available on iPad and iPhone. Now, they had a restricted banking license offered back in June 2015. While they've recently now had their full license and they can start, in particular, offering facilities to small businesses. Now, let's say this is a real revolution in the way that banking is operating and is probably really the way that things are going to be in the future. Now, as 2016 progresses, Atom Bank will be launching a range of personal saving products, so of overdraft facilities, current accounts, savings accounts, debit and credit cards, and as I mentioned, banking for small businesses. So if you're real into technology and want to bypass the traditional routes, check out Atom Bank and their website is atombank.co.uk and have a look to see how that could work with your business life. As I say, a new way of doing banking and possibly the way of things will be in the future. Moving on now to a more traditional high street bank and Lloyds Bank has just launched its SME charter for 2016. This is where they've set out some goals and aspirations around what they want to do to help UK small businesses during the remainder of this year. Now, their charter has given particular focus to helping exporters. And there's a particular push on behalf of the UK government, um, which was um, launched a programme called Exporting is Great. Now, the UK government want to get 100,000 businesses starting exporting. And what Lloyds Bank are going to do to help that programme is that they've pledged to help 5,000 businesses during 2016 to get started in exporting. And they set themselves a target that by 2020, they want to have helped 25,000 businesses starting exporting overseas. Well, what if you're not an exporter? What are Lloyds Bank going to do? Well, they've made some pledges there as well, particularly on high growth startups. They want to help 1,000 of those during 2016 achieve a turnover of £1 million within the next three years. For other businesses that are more UK-centric, well, they want to help 100,000 small businesses meet their aspirational goals. And in terms of lending, which is what it's all about at the end of the day, Lloyds Bank has said that during 2016, they want to achieve a net lending target to small businesses of getting £1 billion at the door. Net lending is new money lent, less repayment, so a net growth of £1 billion. So good to see a high street bank there pledging some very specific goals on helping small businesses. So if you want to know what Lloyds Bank can do for you, go along to their website or pop along to the local manager and see what they can do for you as one of the UK's small businesses. When it comes to business confidence, in the last few business finance bulletins, I've made reference to a number of surveys carried out which reveal that confidence levels amongst small businesses is on the decline. Well, that finding has been turned on its head by a new survey just released by Bibby's Financial Services. And the quarterly survey is part of their regular SME Confidence Index tracker. And the latest one for quarter one 2016 has revealed that businesses are much more confident than we think. Well, first of all, when compared to the last quarter of 2015, there's been a 12 percentage point increase in the number of businesses who are forecasting growth expectations for growth are on their way up. Now, when asked the question, are you expecting sales to decline over the next three months? At the end of 2015, 17% of them said yes. In the first quarter of 2016, that number was down to 8%. So that's nearly halved. 
So again, much more confidence. And in fact, 48% of businesses said they are expecting sales to go up over the next three months. And when it comes to investment, um, three quarters of businesses said they are planning to invest. And that investment is coming in the form of new buildings, plant and equipment, office equipment and IT. So really good signs there for the economy in terms of investment. But obviously, there are businesses out there that don't wish to invest. And when asked why, 26% of them put it down to the state of the economy, competition, red tape and regulation. So there is an element of uncertainty out there. And particularly as, as we record this, we're coming up soon in June to the EU referendum. So perhaps it's not all doom and gloom and there are certainly areas, um, areas of confidence out there and we do see it every day in the businesses that we're dealing with. So the message is don't necessarily listen to the uh, the doom day sayers and um, there is a lot of confidence out there. So just get on, head down, continue to grow your business profitably. On now to my business finance tip of the week. Interesting week this week. Uh, we were asked by a bank to go in to see if we could help one of their clients and they couldn't help and wanted to know if we would be able to source an appropriate source of alternative finance. Now, the key reason why the bank couldn't help the business in this case was that there was a concern that the business is over trading. Now, what is this term over trading? Well, very simply, you may think, well, you know, surely all trading is good. Well, no, there can come a point where too much sales is bad, particularly if your business is operating off a very thin capital base. You think about it, um, it's all really down to your working capital, how quickly you can move cash through your business. Now, over trading can have an impact where um, your cash takes a long time to move through the system from ordering to making the product to issuing the invoice to getting paid. If you've got a long cycle, if you've got a lot of sales coming in at the top of the funnel and it takes a long time for your cash to move through the system, that's over trading. Your sales are bigger than your ability to fund it. And the problem there is you will eventually run out of cash because you can't turn cash around quick enough. And that's the concern when it comes to over trading. You simply run out of cash. You can't pay your creditors um, on time. Your creditors turn around and say, we can't help you anymore. The bank turn around and say, you can't help you anymore. And here's the thing, you are profitable on paper. You just don't have the cash reserves to keep the working capital cycle and the wheel going. That's over trading. How do you solve the problem? Well, there's two ways you can do this. Number one, it's fresh money in, in terms of equity or a cash injection from you as a business owner. Fresh cash will help the, the cycle move along quickly. And um, the other ways of doing it is supplier finance. And there are a lot of facilities out there where um, other organizations can pay your supplies on your behalf. And you wait 90 days to 120 days and you pay that facility off. Bypasses the bank completely. Or the other solution is invoice discounting and factoring, whereby you take um, um, invoices which are owed to you for, say, 90 days, and you get money against them today. And that just, again, frees up cash flow. So don't get caught into an overtrading um, problem. Plan ahead your cash flow and look at all your different sources of finance in order to make sure you don't fall into that trap. Well, that's it for this week. And as ever, I hope you enjoyed this bulletin. If you did, please give it a like and a share. It all helps. Um, as always, if you're watching on the YouTube version, don't forget we've got a podcast version available on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher. And if you are listening on the podcast, just go along to our YouTube page, which is simply search for Rob Warlow and you'll find this bulletin and all previous bulletins there as well. So thanks very much for being with me. I look forward to being with you again next week. Have a great, successful and profitable week. Bye-bye now.